hello and welcome back and today I want to help you decide whether you should go for this or go for this. That's right, today I want to talk about helping you decide between choosing a Synology NAS system or going the open source route and going for a true NAS. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, that's right, this isn't strictly just a true NAS thing. This is an iX Systems pre-built true NAS server. It's here representing true NAS in today's comparison, but it's worth remembering that this is a complete turnkey solution. This, what I've got here on the table, is as close as you can get in true NAS to this. It is the open source, free to download software, packaged, configured, and presented in hardware by iX Systems. That is the hardware arm, if you will, or kind of collaborative partner with true now so if you are interested in the end of today's video of getting you know starting your road towards true NAS and you're a little intimidated by the whole concept and one of the reasons you were looking at the likes of Synology is because it's a complete hardware software ter software turnkey solution then do check these guys out there may be a link in the description but that's why they're here they're representing true NAS but throughout the course of this video I'm going to talk about true NAS in a much more general sense okay so First and foremost, let's talk about these two platforms. First and foremost, Synology. They are one of the um, biggest, or possibly the most well-known brand in the world of network attached storage. With well over 20 years of experience in the field, they've been producing combined hardware and software solutions for more than those two decades. With it, when you do purchase one of their systems, you get the following. You get a server that can support anywhere from one to you know, 24 or even higher bays of storage, depending on the hardware configuration. Also with that, you arrive with a CPU inside that is already um, a, a server efficient and designed towards 24, seven days, weeks, months, and years of use. Also memory, generally with the option to upgrade is included in the majority of cases, although there are of course exceptions. And with that, you'll have the means to interact with the device via the network or via the wider internet, internet via a router and get your firewall in order. And essentially, a Synology NAS system is the means to create large pools of storage, backed up by things like RAID and stuff like that, we'll talk about another time, uh, that allows you to store your data, to back up your data, to access your data, but also use your data towards tailored purposes, be they home or business needs. You can't buy the Synology software on its own. You could only get the Synology software by buying Synology hardware. Synology's USP always seems to be to keep things as user-friendly as possible, as responsive as possible, and ultimately giving you the most polished and complete hardware software experience for server and pr indeed private server ownership that you can get right now. Now, who are TrueNAS. TrueNAS is an open source platform that's much like, you know, Synology, you know, and all the others, is a software that you install on some hardware. So again, CPU, memory, motherboard, network interfaces. You can use an old PC that you've got locked in a cupboard alongside the hardware's mid-range at least. And it allows you to create your own server from scratch. It won't be living inside Windows, or with the, with the exception of maybe using a VM or whatever, we are talking about it running like the operating system runs on a Windows computer. We are talking about downloading free, up-to-date, and regularly community-supported software on your own custom build, either one that you build from scratch or one using old hardware you've got knocking around. It is by far the most affordable option of the two. It's also the most configurable. Anyone that's ever used TrueNAS, you'll know, not just because of things like ZFS, and we'll talk about ZFS and BTRFS in a moment, but um, um, TrueNAS is completely customizable. It is API designed from the ground up. It is designed to be as flexible as you need it to be, and it is designed to run either as a whole system working together or the entire system segmented into jails and separate areas to ensure that your data is as separated as possible with also the ability to completely remove the necessity of a super user. So these are two 
very different attitudes within our server space that we're talking about. Now, when it comes to Synology's platform, it is arguably more strict. It is arguably more constrained in what you can do with it. So, uh, Synology allow you to do lots of things with their hardware, and they allow you to run lots of applications, first and third party. But there is no avoiding that um, a Synology solution is a little bit more controlled. Anyone that's ever compared console gaming with the likes of Xbox or PlayStation versus building your own PC from scratch will know that console gaming works out more expensive, but it is a much more stable environment with ease of utility and is far more user friendly. However, the PC environment allows modification in the form of mods. It allows better graphics and customization. It's a more scalable field, although arguably it can at times feel less stable and require a little bit more on the skill set of the end user. That comparison applies so much against hardware systems from Synology and building your own server or indeed even using an iX system true NAS like this one. So if you are a user that doesn't really have much of a skill set when it comes to networking, when it comes to building PCs, when it comes to understanding tech hardware and you are looking for a solution that's just going to sit there, shut up and do its job, you want to go for that one. Because the Synology solution is designed to be as user-friendly as possible. It's designed to just do the things you need it to do. Whereas TrueNAS, because by its very raison d'etre, to be as open as possible means it is going to be complex. It means it's going to require more input from you to set it up. Now, if you fast forward through your ownership of one of these devices, that's another factor you're going to have to bear in mind. Because... The Synology platform, once you are in the Synology ecosystem, although you can migrate data out with things like, you know, setting up an ISSMB share or just sending the data over to another server, for the most part, your data inside the Synology ecosystem is quite inconvenient to take out of the Synology ecosystem in bulk. It is a great platform, and it is a platform that allows expansions. It allows migration from system to system to system. But at the same time, it is kind of hinged on the idea that when you do move system to system to system, that those other systems are Synologies. And it, leaving the Synology platform is not that straightforward because of that closed system architecture. It makes it very secure, and it makes your data incredibly accessible by the applications it includes and remember Synology's platform includes a lot of first party apps that we'll talk about later on but it is nowhere near as easy or as fluid to migrate as that of a true NAS server whether you get a pre-built one or build your own run from scratch because of the nature of ZFS and the nature of how the data sets and the volumes and the RAID storage pools and stuff are put together Moving data to a new server is so much easier. The same with expanding is a great deal easier with the right settings. And that open source is the key word there. It's the idea that what are you going to do in 10 to 20 years? That data is going to have to move to another system. And sometimes you've got to think about that down the line. And I think that is an area of TrueNAS that doesn't get the credit it deserves. The fact that you can migrate up your data years and years down the line to another custom built server and just plug in the drives. It's that straightforward. Whereas the Synology ecosystem and the Synology RAID, you can't pull five drives in a RAID 5 out of a Synology and stick it in a new server. You can maybe stick it in a Linux, plug it in and it will sort of appear, but it will be nowhere as secure or as stable as it would be as sticking it in another Synology, which again is kind of their prerogative. And when we talk about prerogatives, we have to address the Synology elephant in the room there. And that is that their more enterprise level releases in 2022, um, excess and above, from 2022 onwards have seemingly arrived with slightly stricter compatibility listings. That is to say that if you go for a Synology XS level system, we have started to notice that some of the, such as the DS3622 XS Plus or the 2422 Plus 12-bay systems 
they pretty much tell you you should be using Synology Media. They don't stop you using WD Reds and Seagate Iron Wolves, but still nonetheless, if you use third-party drives, some of the hard drive, uh, so the storage manager options are not available. It will list the storage array um, as you know as worrisome. I know the terminology has changed in the latest DSM 7.1 update. Um, and on top of that, when you do use third-party drives, some services won't work the same. They'll still be visible, but when it comes to things like Smart, which will be accessible, some of the advantages that Synology afford to their own storage media won't be visible. And I think a lot of users buying into the Synology ecosystem may have to expect that the brand is making a very loud job of saying, if you're at the enterprise tier, we recommend our enterprise hard drives and our enterprise SSD. Now, such compatibility um, modifications, for want of a better word, are not a thing in TrueNAS. TrueNAS's compatibility list is bordering on infinite. Yes, there's a recommended minimum spec there, and I wouldn't go less than 8 gig of memory, 16 ideally, and definitely a 4-core um, x86-based processor, but even then, that's not going to break the bank too much. And after that, the support of a wider degree of PCI upgrade cards, uh, the community support of those applications as well, again, hinging on the idea you're going to have to work quite hard to set the system up and improve your tech level, still means that a true NAS system is considerably more compatible with third-party hard uh, hardware than a Synology is. Not even just at the enterprise level, but even at the smaller levels. Synology's systems, such as the DS920 Plus down here, its scale out and upgradability is a little bit more limited than what you'll find there on a true NAS system. Now, flipping things over slightly, let's talk about software, because that's another big, big difference between these two. Because although true NAS has an app center for plugins and does arrive with a wide range of support of third party community plugins, it is not as good as Synology's flat out. Synology have made things abundantly clear from the offset. They aren't just giving you hardware. They're not just giving you storage. They have got applications that replace the bulk of the SAAS or Software as a Service um, applications out there. They have their own chat application that replaces Skype and WhatsApp. They've got their own Office application that you know deals with all of the standard Office um, applications that will replace the likes of Microsoft Office and Google Docs. They have got Active Backup Suite and premium enterprise grade back up tool they've got hyper backup they've got cloud sync they've got synology drive which in of itself is a fantastic application for backups and shared team folder utilization as well as file pinning and file streaming you've got an enterprise grade surveillance platform for multiple ip cameras dotted around your home or business called surveillance station a virtual machine application all built in and although some of these features are supported on the first party level by true NAS and indeed on an IX systems build, it's not to the same degree, it's not as fluid, and it's not as premium. And I think when it comes to the software, depending on if you already use third-party software that you were intending to use anyway and just target the NAS, that's going to make all the difference. Because genuinely, when you use DSM-7 and its graphical user interface, you know you are utilizing a complete system. True NAS, it has the storage and you cannot rival ZFS and its robustness, its recovery, its checks, everything. It is just a great storage platform. But after that, that is when things swing this way. And if you wanted a complete ecosystem for your business, you wanted to integrate your already existing cloud service in Google Workspace or Office 365, it's done so much better on the Synology platform. If you don't, in, if you want to invest your time, uh, your money, and not your time, for a complete solution, they're going to win out for you there. Now, I talk a lot about these two brands and their eco structure and the software, but one big difference that I don't think, because I'm not the first person to compare Synology and TrueNAS, but one of the things that no one seems to compare anywhere near as much as they should 
is the graphical user interface of these two because TrueNAS is an incredibly customizable platform. It is an incredibly bespoke solution that you can design with multi-layered encryption, multi-layered security, a huge degree of separation between applications and security, but its graphical user interface is intimidating in the extreme. And although there are hints and guides and it is considerably easier in the last couple of revisions than it ever was in the old free NAS days and free BSD back in the day, it's still an incredibly complex solution compared with Synology's. A simple case in point, the Synology user interface looks like you're using Mac OS. It looks like you're using Android or Windows. The, um, the TrueNAS platform looks like WordPress. Okay, and when you and even simple small details such as a file manager, if you want to look at your files on the TrueNAS, you either have to access it via your OS via a network or remote web dev share or the like, or using you know iSCSI and utilizing your proprietary um, file management on your OS, or you can open up breadcrumb style indexing in a web browser tab that doesn't give you any of the copy paste options, none of the management, none of the folder creation, the sharing, none of that, okay? Whereas on the Synology platform, not only have you got a file manager that has copy paste thumbnail sharing encryption properties extract um, encrypt archive all of the stuff you would expect but on top of that a huge array of tailored applications for photos for music for video um, for all manner of services and once you combine that with intense CMS monitoring systems and analytical tools from Synology there in the background like Active Insight and even hybrid cloud storage stuff if you combine in C2. The Synology platform is incredibly fluid, but it's just going to cost you more. And again, it comes down to that argument of price versus time. The Synology platform, all of the services I've talked about are included either behind 30-day trials or with utilization straight off the bat with licensing at one point. So bear in mind, when you go for the Synology platform, you can do all the things I said. But bear in mind that there are just a number of those services that they give you a little taste at the beginning and then you might have to cough up for a subservice. Whereas on the TrueNAS platform, you are heavily reliant on third-party tools, but at the same time, unless those third-party tools in of themselves have subscriptions, such as OpenVPN, you don't have to worry about that. So again, it's time versus money. Now, I have a whole video comparing the software of TrueNAS and DSM side by side. Today's video was about hardware concerns. Again, if there's anything you think I've missed, and I go into way more detail about ZFS and um, storage structure and networking over in the software video. But this has been about choosing Synology versus true nas on a hardware level let me know what you guys think in the comments but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video again if you don't know what solution you need use the free advice section in the comments buzz me a message i'll have a little look it's a free advice it might take us a day or two to reply to you we'll look at your requirements there based on time allocation budget and we can recommend a great solution for you we don't get any money for it it's a this donate buttons use it we might use amazon affiliate but let's face it almost certainly not here and ultimately we're just looking to help you get the right solution for you but other than that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time